What's up guys? Welcome to our channel and don't forget to like and subscribe. Today we have a devotion and it's about steps to freedom in Jesus. Before we give this devotion, I ask her for permission. It's our channel. <laughs> yeah. yeah you paid it with me. To communicate that when we're doing these devotions or sermons or whatever, there are trustworthy because when you go on YouTube, you look up some people who use theology and make things so out of context, which for us, we try our best not to do that and keep it in the lines of context and understanding. And as we communicated this, I've been through seminary. My major is biblical studies, which means that when through that training of understanding and interpreting and researching three years and now he's going to get his master's so even more training yeah which i mean biblical studies is mostly in the confines of theology and the bible or understanding and interpreting but christian leadership is more in the methodology of leadership and theology of leadership and all that so I'm mainly going to be reading from my notes. I put this into steps because it's steps to freedom in Jesus. And we have, let's see, five steps or maybe five steps with a little bit more than five. The first one I came up with, not in any particular order, is to put yourself in his presence, whether that's adoration or a private moment with Jesus. How are you supposed to know him if you're not spending time with him? And number two, surrender to him. Give him every burden weighing on your shoulder. If you're not surrendering to him, and if you're just, I don't know, what's a good analogy for that? Being weary. I don't know if that's where I was going with it. But when you read that, that's what came up to my mind. I was thinking of the Bible verse, come all you weary or heavy burden. Yeah. I mean, I've had trouble like in the past. Say like there's this one sin like weighing on you and you're just not giving it to God or not even with sin. If you're just not giving God the time of day, just surrender to him. Yeah. Don't hold on to whatever it is that's separating you from him. Yeah, release. Because there's no, there's no freedom in that. And a lot of people will talk about Christianity and they're like, there's no freedom in that just submitting to God. But there is freedom in that. And that's what I'm trying to get the point across. About. Number three, open your Bible, get to know him most. See, that's what I was saying. The word is living and breathing. It is a guideline to live. You need guidance through depression, through any sin that you can't let go of, or even love. Jesus is pure love, and he will reveal his love to you. He will also show you how to love others if you're struggling with that. He will also tell you how to finance if you're struggling with that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me, huh? It's a <laughs> Yeah. I do struggle with that department. <laughs> but like my point is, open your Bible because the word is living and breathing. To go on with that, sometimes I just find encouraging scriptures. What does the Bible and what does God say to you? God says that I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And God does say that I am a child mm -hmm. and I can go to him. Yeah. A lot of people, when they approach reading the Bible, they're like, okay, this was written years ago. I'm not getting anything from it. Yeah, they think that's r less relevant mm -hmm. to them now, which evidence does say that's even more relevant in today's times mm -hmm. than that time. And it's real world problems. The disciples were not these holy guys, you know? I mean, look at where Jesus took them from and transformed them. And that's what he can do for us in any situation. Uh, it's like what Jesus said to Peter. Don't say it's unholy when I say it's holy. Number four. Or ask for freedom. If you want freedom in Jesus, mm -hmm. ask for it. He will free you from sin. He will free you from burdens. You don't need to put yourself in a position to stumble at a party or at a bar or anywhere where you feel uncomfortable. It, if you, even if that's not where you're struggling with, it could be something that makes you uncomfortable. In your heart, you know it's not right, but you still go through with it. Mm -hmm. Two times in the Bible where it says, Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Amen. Ask for freedom. So a lot of people ask God for something and then they get hurt when he doesn't give it to you. There's some people that I saw in the comment section of this one like Christian video and a lot of people were getting angry and saying like Christians will say oh well he's just telling you no if he doesn't give you something and oh he has a plan and then make it to where it sounds like God is just contradicting himself all the time. God never contradicts himself even in his word even when you look at Old Testament or New Testament or even now he it never all flows because it's it, one story exactly and it all comes together Mm -hmm. Atheists will say about Christians that like they'll pray and ask for something and then people will just say oh God said no that said no that's why you don't get it well, but then they'll bring up I thought you said God has a plan so he's just changing his mind God can change his mind though he's been merciful he is a merciful God right when you said that I thought of like how we pray the prayer but we're not ready for the prayer and he never actually does say no I heard it said in the these three ways he either says yes he either says be patient where i, I get the term you're not ready mm -hmm. or he says i got something better yeah i mean he knows our whole plan for our lives right so yeah, he's a step he steps ahead of you so he can see what's yeah. coming before you do i agree where he says but i got something better he determines the steps which that's actually a famous verse we may plan the steps but he determines them that's probably where they getting it from oh well god says no not necessarily now if it go against his word then no if it comes from a humbleness then yeah next part of this oh, it's this still not it's still number four it's just yeah. like i made a little point a point b point c <laughs> you know the saying the truth will set you free in John 8 32 and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free while that is a common saying it's also biblical Jesus is the truth and he will set you free we're talking about freedom Jesus is the truth and he is the one that sets you free a lot of people says well well it's my truth or go after your truth which your truth or my initial truth doesn't exist because like we said we may plan the steps mm -hmm. but god determines them yeah so jesus is the way the truth and the light even going more into depth about Christ setting us free and in Galatians 5 1 so Christ has truly set us free now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law what does Paul says that with the law there's a thing in the Old Testament called the Torah which is the commands of God or the laws of God the law of Moses what he's coming from is the religious law where the Pharisees or the Jewish law. What Paul is saying is if we get tied up with just, oh, you're disobeying the law, you're submitted to God's judgment. Yes, but Jesus came as the sacrificial lamb so we all can be set free. Jew or Gentile. He didn't Gentile. come to abolish the law. He came so that he can fulfill it. Number five, start speaking Jesus. Don't just let him be someone you visit on Sunday at church once a week. He wants to know you. He wants you to tell him about your day. He wants to free you and others. So learn to hear his voice. It doesn't matter if you think people will judge you. Share Jesus with others. If you hear God telling you to, it will make their day and plant a seed and possibly free them too. All you have to do is just plant that seed in someone's life, just bring them up and God will take it from there. And we're called to tell others about Jesus. It doesn't matter if it makes you uncomfortable. You don't have to push it on others, but it is your job to introduce Jesus. When you start speaking Jesus over others and just over yourself and over your household, over your family, you will notice a change in your heart and your soul. You will start walking in purpose that God has for you and you will find freedom in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus is so powerful. Now, we may make it seem like it's amazing all the time, like we're happy and joyful. That's not the case. <laughs> I literally said, just a warning, everything will not be all sunshine and rainbow. Jesus never promised us a life without suffering. He promised us that if we believe in him and follow him, then we will be with him in paradise. 
And then I'm going to talk a little bit about spiritual warfare. You might have spiritual warfare, which is rough. So you might be asking, what is spiritual warfare? I have a few verses. Um, Ephesians 6, 12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.13 Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. From the last devotion, you are going to be tempted, but let that temptation encourage you. Maturity is not me not running away from my problems, which if you're lustful, like yeah, run away from that. But maturity is me, yeah, I can do it, but I'm not going to. Like yeah, I can lash out, but I'm gonna stay humble and let God deal with that. But like I said earlier, speak Jesus over yourself and clothe yourself with God's armor. He will help you with it. But you have to be praying. You have to be calling on him in that moment. When you clothe yourself with the armor of God, then through Jesus in his mighty name, you can fight the devil off. Eventually, if the devil sees that he is not bothering you with something, he will go away and realize that he doesn't have a hold on you with that anymore. That's where people don't realize the enemy, the devil, can't go after you. He'll go after something else that you hold dear, like your family or your work, your job, or your ministry. That's where people don't realize. It might not be the situation, it might be the devil or the the enemy and in another spectrum we bring too much credit to the devil maybe it's not even the devil maybe it's just like i heard it this way we got three enemies the devil spiritual principality the world and ourselves and sometimes it's just life but we need to ask ourselves, God, how can we learn from this? I feel like on our channel, we discuss a lot of life topics and sin and living in Christianity. But what we're trying to do is trying to encourage y'all to keep the faith, keep living for Christ. Yeah, I mean, I don't want all of our topics that we talk about to be negative, if that makes sense. It's like you said, to encourage yeah. so you don't have to be in that place. I heard it this way, for us to encourage you, we need to know what we're talking about and the problem, the issue, mm -hmm. and see how we can bring you out of that. Yeah. Okay, this is my ending note. This is a call to just give your life to Jesus, no matter where you're at. Give him everything and let him have control because that's where you'll find freedom. Amen. We need to give up our control to get freedom back mm -hmm. like i remember when i did something bad that cost me my education and basically forced me to get a ged but after accepting rice now i got that bible college degree i actually got a college degree <laughs> and i'm going for my master's and getting a license God's G give it to him. Like, whatever god has in store for you it's so much greater than what you think you could come up with in your own i'm basically a testament to that yeah yeah so that's what jesus does <laughs> yeah well we gonna wrap this thing up and i just was like this video was intended for youth because i was intending to preach this to the life team but it's literally for whatever age group you're at it's biblical where you're never too young to do anything but also you're never too old to fulfill god's plans either how old was it abraham and sarah yeah they were like 80 years old yeah they were old and then they lived to how how long 220 Five, I think. Ben. Noggin. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye guys.